Hello, my name is Scott Stuckey. I am a senior technical staff member with the International Code Council. I would like to welcome you to a brief video that will be explaining the book Building Code Basics Fire, which, which is based upon the 2009 edition of the International Fire Code. Uh, the book is designed for use by new or experienced fire code officials and fire inspectors and it's designed to cover those basic areas of interest that are important to the fire service including administration, fire department access and water supply, basic fire protection systems, means of egress, certain special hazards such as flammable finishes operations, high pile storage and finally uh, deals with the most common hazardous materials, compressed gases, and flammable and combustible liquids. In this video, we will be discussing and reviewing the purpose and intent of the Building Code Basics Fire book, which is part of a series published by the International Code Council and Del Mar Cengage Learning. Uh, this particular manuscript is based upon the 2009 edition of the International Fire Code and is designed to offer guidance to new or experienced fire code officials and inspectors. The layout of the Building Code Basics Fire book is designed to facilitate easy understanding of the purpose and intent of the provisions in the 2009 fire code. One unique feature about this publication is, is that there is a section for a prerequisite reading uh, on occupancy classification. Uh, in these four pages, uh, we explain how occupancies are classified, what the occupancy classification system is based upon the International Building Code and how these various occupancies were derived. Uh, this serves as a foundation for applying the fire code to either new construction or to existing buildings as occupancy classification is an important part of any inspection. What makes Building Code Basics Fire useful to code officials, fire inspectors, and even design professionals is the arrangement and format Instead of presenting actual code provisions, which are found in the 2009 IFC, what we've chosen to do is actually provide an, a, a simple explanation of what the provisions are as it relates to the, a given subject and explain how that's properly applied when, when using the fire code. Uh, the other element of this that we also provide is, is that we always reference any discussion from the code back to the applicable code section so that the reader can look at this book along with the code and get a much better understanding of how the requirements in the fire code are applied to any given situation. Throughout the 242 pages of technical content in Building Code Basics Fire, uh, we also include two helpful features to ensure that the reader understands uh, each and every area of the subject matter. Uh, you will see a, a dialogue box titled Code Basics, which is provided in each section to summarize what the basic requirements are that are being presented in the book. In each chapter, you will also see a second dialogue box known as you should know, which what this does is it summarizes key elements of the content within the chapter so that the reader ensures that they understand um, the provisions that are being presented regarding the applicable subject. In the remainder of this video, it will present a discussion on some of the requirements in Chapter 17 of the Building Code Basics Fire book. Uh, that addresses the 2009 IFC requirements for compressed and liquefied compressed gases. This will give you an opportunity to see how this book can be extremely useful, especially for doing new or continuing education with code officials and inspectors. In the 2009 IFC, gases are classified as either being compressed, liquefied, compressed, or dissolved. For any material to be 
a gas, it must have a vapor pressure of at least 41 pounds per square inch absolute, uh, or 41 PSIA. Uh, your packaging method is going to be selected based upon the chemistry of the gas and the hazards that it presents. In a compressed gas, kinetic energy is used to literally push as many molecules that can be safely packaged into a single cylinder. In a liquefied compressed gas, such as anhydrous ammonia or anhydrous chlorine, um, the gas is actually stored as a liquid, and then when it's removed, uh, it, it reverts back into a gaseous state. A third type is a dissolved gas. Um, that is very common with material like acetylene, or it is dissolved in solution with acetone so that it is a stabilized material. With very few exceptions, all compressed gas containers are going to be equipped with a pressure relief device. Um, pressure relief devices are either going to be reusable or sacrificial devices. In the top photo, this is a spring-loaded safety relief valve that is installed internally inside it of a pressure vessel. This is a reusable relief valve. Once the valve reaches a certain pressure, the valve will open, relieve the pressure, and reclose. On the bottom, you see a end of a one-ton cylinder that uses a fusible plug relief device, where the fusible plug uses a predictable low melt point metal so if the cylinder is involved in fire or heated above a uh, given temperature usually either 212 to 250 degrees the metal will melt and thus allow the cylinder contents to be relieved to atmosphere it will not reclose a common misconception is is that the color of the cylinder indicates its contents and that is not correct the only correct way to identify the contents in a compressed gas cylinder is, is that it must be labeled and the IFC requires that the labeling comply with a compressed gas association standard C7 which offers guidance for the preparation of precautionary labels and markings for compressed gas containers. Cylinders also require physical protection so they are guarded and protected from physical impact. Uh, generally, this can be done by restraining the cylinder to a fixed object, such as a building wall or a building frame, or you can also use a rack that is designed to uh, safely store the cylinders and protect them from falling. As you've seen, the Building Code Basics Fire Manuscript is a great addition to the library of any fire official, plans examiner, inspector, permit technicians, design professionals, and contractors. It's also an excellent book for use at the community college level when training uh, individuals in the area of fire inspection and code enforcement. In addition to the Building Code Basics Fire, other books in the series include Building Code Basic for buildings regulated by the IBC, as well as a Building Code Basics for one and two family dwellings and townhomes. If you'd like to order the Building Code Basics Fire or any other publications from the International Code Council, you can call our staff at 866-891-1695, and our courteous staff will take your order via the telephone. You can also order it online from our electronic bookstore at www.iccsafe.org. Thank you, and have a great day.